Today we're going to be looking at non-binding price floor in the market for beef. So um, first I've just started off with our basic supply and demand um, typical market. So I'm just going to really quickly go through a regular price floor. Um, but if you want more information, I have another video on price floors that is more in-depth. So really quickly, so let's say in the market for beef, the government decides that producers are not getting paid enough, so they decide to set a price floor. I'm just going to do that with a different color, price floor. So with a price floor, what happens is, is this right here becomes our new quantity supplied, okay? This is our new quantity supplied, but that, okay, that doesn't matter that much, okay. And this is the new price, okay. So the government sets this price floor. Then, for some reason, the supply of uh, beef decreases. So let's say for some reason there is an outbreak of mad cow and supply just plummets. It decreases significantly. So we see the quantity supply decreases so much. Okay, so this is Q3. Look at how much. Look, oh my goodness, it's decreasing so much. And up here, our price is increasing. Okay, so this is a non um, a non-binding price floor. And the reason is because this price floor becomes ineffective. The purpose of the price floor was so that the price um, for the farmers would be higher. That's what the government wanted. They wanted these beef farmers to get a higher price. But because the supply decreased by a natural cause, the price increased anyway. So the price floor is non-binding because the price floor essentially becomes ineffective.